Press of AC Eagles beat writer Dave Weinberg. He joins me now. And, uh, Dave, halfway through the year, your summary of the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, well, I thought if they could get uh, – when in the beginning of the season, if you had told me four and four, I think they would have been a little – I would have been very uh, satisfied with that. However, just the way that everything played out in the beginning, especially in the beginning, I think they had higher expectations. So they were a little um, – Frustrated, especially Carson Wentz, who we just got done talking to. They're very frustrated and uh, disappointed at their inability to uh, to close the deal in some games, and uh, they're uh, they're not real happy with being four and four at this point, considering how you know, what it could have been. Yeah, and I look at the one number that sticks out to me is uh, the plus minus in terms of points for and points against. They're a plus fifty seven, Dave. Uh, that really suggests mm-hmm. that this team, you know, should be better than four and four. Yeah, they should be. They've had the opportunities to win at least, you know, two or three more games, uh, even more than that, really. And uh, just weren't able to to close the deal when it counted in the clutch. Or, you know, there's uh, also some um, missed opportunities as far as Peterson's uh, play calling and decision making, as we've talked about. And, uh, yeah, when you add it all up, they probably should be they should be at least uh, five and three or, or six and two even. Yeah, there's no question uh, that the plays here to play there probably changes a bunch of things. What what's the play here, play there uh, that stood out to you from Sunday? Mm, boy, well, those two fourth down plays uh, weren't weren't good. <laughs> oh, you're talking the, the fourth down, yeah, yeah, Peterson. yeah. Especially the one with uh, when they tried to run Wentz on that um, quarterback option thing um, that didn't fool anybody, you know, especially the Giants. Uh, you know he's a he's a he's a mobile, uh, athletic kind of kid. But um, there's a difference between you know outrunning one double A linebackers and and trying to keep up with guys who are 300 pound guys who are maybe even faster than you. And that uh, plus the offensive line didn't do him any favors in that play either. But uh, that one and obviously the Sproles uh, Sproles fourth and one. Um, I really didn't have much of a pro- as much of a problem with that one as I did the uh, the other one. But I think they probably should have taken the points in both situations with the field goals. Well, obviously, you know, you take the points, you know, and, and you're assuming yeah. that the kicker makes a kick. You got a different game all right. of a sudden. And I, my comp, sure. uh, uh, I would contend, Dave, and this is just me, that I don't mind going for it on fourth down if I have the personnel. Right now, this team doesn't have the right. personnel, so you take the points. If I have Julio Jones, if I have Ezekiel Elliott, maybe I don't feel as – uncomfortable going for it on fourth, but they don't have that go-to guy. Right, and especially when you're on the road and you're already down 14, uh, you should probably just try to inch your way back in and try and instead of trying to uh, turn the momentum, you know, all in one shot, just try to uh, pick and choose, like just uh, kind of chip away at it. When uh, I think that was a mistake that, that Peterson made. I mean, I, I don't fault him for the aggressiveness. I don't mind them going for it on fourth. Uh, it's just the plays that he called. I think were bothered were more bothersome than anything. But uh, I'm with you, though. I, I would have taken. I would have, you know, kicked the field goals there. Like you said, their personnel wasn't the greatest. The offensive line is banged up. Allen Barber's out. Lane Johnson suspended. They really don't have. You know, Jason Kelsey's dealing with that plantar fasciitis. So they really don't have the horses up front to, to overpower anybody. So uh, I think it would have made more sense just to kick in that situation. Dave Weinberg, press of Atlantic City, looking at the birds. Uh, Barbary out again with a hamstring this week. Is that uh, the feeling that he probably won't play again? Yeah, he didn't practice today. And uh, whenever whenever Doug categorizes somebody as week to week instead of game to game, yeah. that means they're not playing. And so, yeah, he's uh, that's, he's in the week to week category at this moment. So I, I'm very surprised if he played against uh, the Falcons on Sunday. Then you got Selleck, who didn't practice today, but Doug kind of indicate that he will be mm-hmm. ready to play uh, this weekend. Yeah, a little surprised because he has a broken rib. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a doctor, obviously, so I don't know the difference between a broken rib and a displaced rib. So he said it's not displaced. So I guess that allows him to play maybe with a flat flat jacket or something. But because uh, I don't. Carson Wentz has a couple broken ribs and didn't play, so right. I, I don't know what the difference is. Well, that that would make more sense because there was a play in that game where they ran Wentz on a sweep and they had Ertz out there as the main blocker. And I'm thinking mm-hmm. if you're going to run a play where the tight end's the blocker, <laughs> at least use the blocking tight end. But I'm assuming that Selleck was not available, but then that play should get thrown in the trash. Right, right. Yeah, you're right there. Uh, I mean, Ertz has worked very hard to, to improve as a blocker, but he's not there yet. 
I might even have maybe use Trey Burton instead of Brent, instead of Zach in that situation. Finally did see the tight ends involved in the offense a little bit more, but yeah. really not late in the game when they needed some plays. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what they're uh, – they seem to be just like grasping at straws, trying to see what works and what doesn't. And um, they have yet to hit on something that they can really like rely on from, from week to week. Uh, you know, you saw Carson Wentz throwing like 40-some passes the last two games. Uh, before that, it was like, you know, 20-some passes against Detroit, I think. So, I don't – They like you were mentioning in the beginning, they don't really seem to have established any identity yet, especially on offense. And uh, they're going to need to. If that, I think the goal this week, it seems to be, is to uh, establish more of a balanced offense, if only to keep uh, Matt Ryan and company off the field. They're going to need to run the ball a little more and, and chew up some clock. Yeah, now, the one thing is, and he kind of talked about this today, that, yeah, he would like to run the ball more. Uh, Andy Mm -hmm. would say that, too, but they never really did. But my question is, you know, back then, Andy had some good backs. You know, you had Buckholder, you had Deuce, you had Westbrook. Uh, Did they have backs that you want to see more of? Well, I want to see more of Wendell Smallwood. Um, It seems like when he gets an opportunity, he makes, you know, aside for that that fumble, which – I don't really blame him all that much coming off the bench cold in the fourth quarter for your first carry. Um, but yes, uh, last week against the Giants, I think he had an 18-yard run, and uh, just wasn't used that much after, if all, if at all, after that. And I'm, that's kind of puzzling me because he seems to have a lot of ability and a lot of potential. Uh, Ryan Matthews certainly isn't getting it done. Getting it done. He's lost his starting job to, to damage balls, essentially. So I uh, and you can't. I don't think you can keep giving Sproles that heavy of a workload. I mean, I'm a big fan of his, and I think he's a really good back and stronger than, and more durable than what people think. But I don't think he's one of those uh, workhorse kind of guys. I think they'd be better off spreading the ball around a little bit more. And and Smallwood's a guy who I think could, could handle that role if they give him the opportunity. Yeah, and a lot of times, Dave, in an NFL season, you do see younger players get more of a workload later on in the year. It's like the coaches don't trust them at first or, you know, want to kind of yeah. ease them in. But normally in the second half, we start to see guys that weren't as big of factors in the first half get more of a rope, get more of an opportunity. And I'm wondering if, if Doug, this is the weekend where, uh, you know, he lets one of these younger guys, most you know notably uh, Smallwood, you know, become more of a part because you're right. You can't keep using Sproles at the rate that you're using them. Yeah, yeah, he's going to wear down if, if that's the case. And uh, I, was, I was talking to Smallwood today, and he seemed pretty excited when the, uh, he found out the game plan that um, they seem to want to run the ball a lot. But as you know, game situations kind of dictate that. I mean, if they fall behind a lot or, or you know, real early like they did last week, then you, you kind of have to start throwing the ball a little bit more to uh, the kick try to play catch up especially in the second half if you're still down so you can't really rely on that balanced attack but if they can wind up getting the lead maybe they can run the ball where the falcons defense down um keep pounding it keep uh, ryan and julio jones on the sideline and maybe that maybe that's the ticket for a win halfway through the year four four dave what's disappointing mm-hmm. you the most mm, boy disappointing uh <laughs> that's kind of tough uh, I don't know if, if I'm really disappointed in any like particular player. Um, Not Ryan Vinny Matthews, Curry, maybe. Vinny Curry is another one. Yeah, he hasn't been as productive, nearly as productive as I expected. I mean, Me Marcus Smith is having a better year than him. That's unbelievable. Um, Ryan, Ryan Matthews definitely. Um, just as uh, overall, I mean, uh, I guess I'm uh, just disappointed in the, that they haven't that they haven't been able to take advantage of their opportunities. Like no one's really pulling away in the NFC except for Dallas. And I think they're going to come back to the pack eventually. And, you know, there's no really, like, dominant team. No, uh, Even at 4-4, four and four, they're still right there for a playoff spot. Mm-hmm. And they'd be in an even better position if they had just, like, got it done in, like, one or two more games. They'd be, they'd be really sitting, you know, sitting pretty at this point. But now it's going to be a, kind of an uphill fight for them in the second half. I'm a little disappointed in, in Peterson, too, maybe. Um hmm. I he in the beginning of the season I really were I think I told you that I was kind of worried if this job was too big for him and after three games I thought I had made a mistake but now I'm not really sure that I did. Um, uh, I I just think that maybe he gets too uh, caught up. I, I don't, I'm not really sure what it is, but I, I just don't think that he's uh, as 
uh, consistent as he needs to be well, last uh, week during he, games, he, especially in the heat of the game. He was asked last week about, um, is there anything that you regret? And he said, I got to yeah. stay aggressive. You know, that's something I got to right. do. I got to stay aggressive. And then the next week you saw that. that he took it to heart. He stayed He stayed aggressive, all right, going for it on those fourth downs. So it was almost like, well, I said this. I got to do it. I said I was going to be aggressive, so I'm going to go do it. And, uh, look, I get it. You know, a lot of times when Chip got hired, what was there? everybody was excited because, oh, this guy's going to go for it. He's going to be reckless. He's going to be aggressive. And we never saw that side of him, really. And now here's Doug doing it. And, uh, you know, it's not working out for him. But there's a reason why that doesn't work in the NFL, that kind of play a lot of times, especially where they are right now. I just don't think this team is ready to be reckless. Yeah, yeah. They have a lot of young guys who uh, make mistakes. Uh, they have, they're dealing, like you said before, they're dealing with injuries. Um, some guys aren't playing up the potential. You got Carson Wentz who's um, shown a lot, but I think he's hit the wall a little bit, which everybody, you know, that's expected if you're a rookie quarterback. You're going to make some mistakes and, um, you know, um, some costly turnovers and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I think I think he might want to – I don't know if he can now, though. I mean, he's been so aggressive and he's come out and said it that he's not going to change his philosophy. I don't know if he can dial it back now. I think he just has to keep going – full steam ahead and hope that they can uh, handle the pressure eventually and learn how to uh, learn how to perform in those situations. And that's kind of been what his mantra is. It's like, hey, we're in these situations. Mm-hmm. As long as we keep, you know, getting chances, eventually we'll break through. I want to ask you, we just talked about disappointments. I know the last couple of weeks you said you want to see more of Doriel Green Beckham, but have we – yeah. Are we beginning to see why Tennessee was so, uh, you know, <laughs> ready to get rid of this guy? I mean, it, it, was the writing on the wall? Did he have a bad game? Or uh, w- are we starting to change our thoughts on him a little bit? I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to chalk it up to just one bad game. Um, but there is that little seed of doubt there now that wasn't there for me before. Mm-hmm. I mean, I really thought he was like a star in the making. And I couldn't believe that Tennessee gave, you know, got him for Dennis Kelly, gave up on him for Dennis Kelly. But uh, I think you you might have to just pause a little bit. I mean, there is that that, that little sprinkle of doubt there uh, after what we just saw. But um, he's just such a physical specimen and has like all the tools. And he seems to, when you talk to him, he seems like he wants to, he wants to be great. He wants to, um, be as good as he, you know, to live up to the physical potential. But um, he it didn't look good the other day. And uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna just talk that up to to one of those days that, that uh, kids sometimes have. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, I think we all want to see him do well. But you know, eight games in, he hasn't really made that that kind of impact. Right. And you wonder how much that is him, how much that is the, mm-hmm. the Eagles don't trust him um, because. You know, we saw the kid Treggs come in. Yeah, two plays, right. but he made an impact in his only two plays. He actually did something. Uh, should they and will we see more of Bryce Treggs? I think so. Yeah, I was actually talking to Bryce today, too, and he seems like he's uh, willing to accept that role. And I think he's a little more – he's not injured anymore, which he was in the beginning of the year. Um, he knows the offense now, which I don't think he really did in the beginning of the year uh, because he, he uh, spent training camp with San Francisco. So – um, but, yeah, I think the more comfortable he gets, and um, you, it was clear on Sunday that, I mean, his speed was just incredible, the way he just blew by the defensive back on that uh, 58-yarder. I mean, he was fine before the guy even knew what hit him. So, uh, yeah, if you can um, keep using that. I mean, I don't know about uh, expanding his role, but I do think he does have a role in this offense as a deep threat, and that's pretty important if you have somebody who can stretch the field like that. Mm-hmm. It's, very, it's pretty clear that uh, Doriel isn't that guy at least now. So uh, I think if you can use Bryce in that role, then you'll be much better off as an offense. Well, I I agree with you there. Like, you don't need to have him out there 80% of the snaps, but, you know, hey, get him out there 30% of the time, move him around. Mm -hmm. He obviously caught the Giants a little off guard last week with his speed, and that's the kind of player he – you know, it's the kind of role you would envision for a guy like Deshaun Jackson if Deshaun Jackson Mm -hmm. wasn't such a high draft choice making such big money. As a small guy with a lot of speed who can just burn by you and and make big plays happen, right? Right, and as Carson even mentioned today, it's even when he's on the field, you don't necessarily have to throw the ball to him, but – Defenses have to pay attention, and right. that opens up some some stuff underneath for some other guys. So, yeah, just the fact that you have that threat on your offense that makes the rest of the offense that much more dangerous. 
Uh, Dave, uh, you wrote a piece over at PressOfAtlanticCity.com. Uh, the Eagles will be in the playoffs. I don't know <laughs> that you are the uh, title writer of that, but obviously. Yes, I am. Okay. Yes, I am. So stating your case <laughs> there. I know sometimes uh, the writers don't write their titles, but uh, some, somewhat stating your case there. Four and four, you think this is a playoff team still? I do, and I even think they're going to lose their next two. Wow. <laughs> and then I think and then I think they're going to go on a roll. I just think the schedule sets up for them uh, where they've played a lot on the road lately, but they have those three division games. Uh, three of their last four are against the NFC East, um, and those games are at home. Eagles have yet to lose at home. I think they will on Sunday, but I don't think there'll be too many more losses. Baltimore seems to be leaking oil a little bit. I mean, they're okay, but I don't think they're, they're world beaters. I originally thought that that was a – an automatic loss, but now I think they can they can beat the Ravens at the link. I think they only lost. I think I don't think Green Bay is anything special either. Aaron Rodgers clearly isn't himself, so I think they'll be pumped up for uh, bringing Jeremiah Trotter into the Hall of Fame that night, plus Merrill Reese. So um, I think they'll be kind of pumped to play on Monday Night Football at home. So I'm looking at their only loss like down the stretch as uh, at probably at Cincinnati, and I think if they can get to nine and seven, and like I, we mentioned earlier. The, Nobody's really pulling away from the pack in the NFC. So even if they don't win the division, you know, even if Dallas holds on and wins the East, I still think they can get a wild card shot. Yeah, I think nine and seven is keeping you in the mix. But their one issue will be uh, that uh, division record and maybe that conference record. Mm-hmm. That's where I got the concerns. But uh, and by the way, that game is at Baltimore uh, down in. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Yep. I'm sorry, but December. I still think they won. Uh, no, and Baltimore, you're right. Baltimore's like filled up. They both started 3-0, and and then they hit the bump. And then, you know, Baltimore beat Pittsburgh last week, you know. But I, I agree. I thought Baltimore would be better than they've been. But uh, I, I'm not ruling them out. I think if they're at 9-7, and seven, they're in the conversation. But you wonder where uh, all the, the tiebreakers and then you have that, like, you know, a game like yeah. Detroit that sneaked its ugly head back in that it's a conference game and maybe Detroit's not even in it. But that conference loss, uh, I, I think it, the, the NFC is going to be wild in December. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to give some Eagles fans some reason to hope. <laughs> We've had such a tough, uh, tough couple of weeks here. You know, I just wanted to give them something to smile about. So uh, well, that was there you the main go. reason for you, it. If you want to smile, uh, depending on uh, how your night went last night, pressofatlanticcity.com. Right, right. The Eagles. Uh, will be in the playoff. That's Dave Weinberg at the Press of Atlantic City. Uh, here, the Eagles take on the Falcons. What do you think of this Falcons team? Six and three. You buying them? Oh yeah, yeah. I think they're really impressive. Matt Ryan seems to. I was always, uh, I always had my doubts about him. He seems like he was kind of like a, a Joe Flacco type, where just when you thought he was going to turn the corner, he'd kind of like stumble a little bit. But now he seems to really just have control of his of himself, of the offense, and they're just rolling on all cylinders right now. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm a big believer in them. I think they're, I think they're really. So to to go deep into the playoffs. All right, uh, all right. Sports Bash ninety seven three ESPN Eagles Falcons this weekend. Matt Ryan, Julio Jones. They don't have a great defense. We'll see um, how they handle the Eagles' defensive pressure. That was the biggest disappointment for me, Dave. They, they didn't get enough pressure on Eli. Defense. They typically yeah. pressure Eli, and that's why they've owned the Giants recently because they called. They brought the. They bring out the best in the bad Eli. Yeah, that's why I even uh, – I had got not an argument, but a discussion with uh, Gene Allen, the Lansing City Heights basketball coach. He's a huge Eagles fan, and he didn't <laughs> think that the Eagles had a shot. And I kept saying, no, 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 Eagles are going to win because they're going to they're gonna punish Eli. They're going to have – knocking them all over the place. He's not going to know what to do. And they didn't even get close to him. I, I felt like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what? Before the game, the reason I picked Philly – I had Philly 23, which is what they scored, to 10. Mm-hmm. I thought the Eagles' defense would be one of those games where Eli gets hit and he's sacked like five or six times and he just yeah, hit all day. Uh, that's the way I thought it would go, too. And, they, look, they don't have a great offense. That was the most disappointing thing to me is they could not not sack him. They just couldn't pressure him because when you pressure him, we know. We've mm-hmm. seen it over the years. We've seen the bad Eli. Uh, the Eagles are the originators of the Eli face, right? I mean, they've caused – Many yeah. of uh, gifts on Twitter with the Eli face. But, by the way, I got a text oh, message they- here uh, that, that I want to bring up real fast because uh, the, the listener wants to know, sure. just out of curiosity, why Smallwood over Barner? He thinks that Barner's the better of the two. Uh, nah. Well, I've seen Barner, and, you know, he is what he is. I think he's an okay guy. Catches the ball pretty well out of the backfield. But Smallwood's more in the, like, uh, he's the Ryan Matthews kind of built kind of guy, big, strong, can just overpower people. 
And uh, he just has that explosiveness that I don't think Barner has. Nothing against Barner. I mean, I think he's a pretty decent back, and I would love to see him get some touches too. But uh, I'm just really intrigued with Smallwood's potential. I just think he has the uh, the ability to, to really be a difference maker. Yeah, uh, you know, and by the way, uh, I agree with you. I saw Barner pl- uh, Smallwood play just about every college game he's ever played. I don't oh, think yeah. The, yeah. I don't think the Eagles are using him the right way. That's just me, but. Uh, I think mm-hmm. he, he's got a lot more in him than uh, than they've allowed him to show. Dave Weinberg from the Press of Atlantic City. He's got more on the birds. Pressofatlanticcity.com. Eagles, Falcons, listen to the game this Sunday here on 97.3. Thank you, Dave. Oh, thanks, Mike. I appreciate